Okay, let's get started with our salted butter. It's going to be three sticks. And the instructions say to leave your ingredients out overnight. And I did that. I'm going to cut each stick of butter into little squares. I find it's easier to cream the butter and the sugar. The butter's been cut into little squares. So I'm going to do this with all three sticks. I'm only going to show you me doing this one time. Now this is a jar teaspoon. This is a jar tablespoon. See the difference? I'm showing you this because Miss Johnny Ruth said to use a drawer teaspoon when you're measuring out your flavor. So you need two drawer teaspoons of lemon flavor, which is what I'm about to add right here. And I think she made the distinction because back in her day, that's what they used. They didn't use, you know, measuring spoons, measuring cups or anything. And you also use two jar teaspoons full of vanilla and I'm adding the flavor to the butter so that it can mix in the whole time um, while I mix the batter and I'm using the whisk attachment because there's no leavening agents no baking soda or baking powder so I want to whip some air into the batter that's why I'm using the whisk attachment instead of the paddle attachment now it's mixed I creamed the butter or mixed it for 10 minutes Now I'm going to start adding the seven eggs. And they were also left out overnight, which is what Miss Johnny Ruth said to do. I'm not going to show myself adding all seven, just showing you one and I think another one. Because as soon as the egg yolk is mixed in, I add the other egg and go from there with all seven of them. Now, they've all been mixed, and I'm using Swanstown's cake flour, and I did sift it. You don't have to, but I did sift it two times last night when I left it out. And someone in one of the Facebook groups suggested when you're making your pound cakes, you always, of course, begin and end with the dry ingredient. ingredient. And so to alternate with the dry, then the wet, the dry, and the wet. And the suggestion was to add your dry ingredients in three batches and the wet in two. And, and that's what I decided to do with this batter. I'm going to speed the video up as I'm adding the dry and wet ingredients. And then I'll pick it back up and then the batter is going to fully mix together. Okay, the batter's been fully mixed together. Just making sure, getting around the sides and then the bottom to make sure everything's getting mixed together. Getting stuff off of the whisk attachment. And I'm going to mix it one more time just to make sure everything's incorporated. Just a few seconds. So you don't want to over mix here when you have everything in there. Shut it off. Again, get everything off the whisk attachment. Then we're going to take the bowl off of the mixer. Use the spatula, mix just a few more strokes to make sure the batter is all incorporated on the sides and down in the bottom. But first, yes, definitely unplug the mixer before you take the bowl off. Move the mixer out of the way. Quick wipe down. Set something under the whisk attachment so if it drips it'll drip into that bowl, not onto the mixer. And here's those few little strokes with the spatula to make sure everything is incorporated. 
And this is a thick batter. See that? Okay. And this is another trick I learned in the Facebook group. When you spray your bun pan, put it in the freezer or the refrigerator. In my case, I put it in the refrigerator. I'm just going to get the cookie sheet that I like to cook it on in case there's an overflow in the stove. Sorry, in the oven, I always say stove. But if there's an overflow in the oven, the overflow into the cookie sheet and not the oven floor. There's the pan. I already sprayed it with Baker's Joy. And that, I sprayed it before I put it in the refrigerator. And I sprayed it again when I took it out. Just to be on the safe side. Now I'm pouring the batter in to the bunt pan. And you don't want to fill your bunt pans more than three-fourths full. Or you definitely will overflow in the oven. And I was a little worried about this because it was a lot more better than I thought but it it all fit and it did not overflow in the oven thankfully and the directions say to cook it at 325 in a preheated oven for an hour to 15 minutes but you have to watch it depending on your stove you can also use the cold method where you don't turn the oven on until you put your cake in there but when you use that cold oven method, you're going to get a really good crust on your cake. And a lot of people like that on their bun cakes or pound cakes. I really don't care for that too much myself. So I do have my oven preheated to 325. The instructions also say to check it at after an hour. Because you may not need the hour in 15 minutes. Or you may need a little more. It just depends on your oven. Getting all the batter out of there. Now I may have tasted this batter. And I may know that it was excellent. I don't like wasting any batter. I like trying to get as much out of there as possible. Now I'm getting the bowl out of the way. Coming back, quick wipe down of the hands. There's a little batter there. Wipe my hands off, my finger off. And you want to make sure you get the batter level in there so I tap it. And I'm going to move the cookie sheet for a couple seconds. And I'm going to tap it on the counter to make sure there's no air bubbles and get all the batter in there. Down into the bunt pan. And I shake it a little bit to try to get it as evenly dispersed in the bunt pan as possible. And you can see I barely have much room left in the bunt pan. But again, it did not overflow, thankfully. And now into the oven it goes. Here it is when it's done. I left it in there a little too long, got a little too brown for me. And there it is when it flipped out. And it flipped out in one piece. Now I'm going to make the glaze because you only use three-fourths a cup of the Eagle brand sweetened condensed milk. There's a good picture of the cake. So I didn't want to waste it because I'm like, what else am I going to do with this little bit of milk that's left? So a lady in the Facebook group suggested this glaze and it's by taste. There's really no measurement. She uses Eagle brand sweetened condensed milk, you know, the leftover amount from the cake, lemon juice, if you have fresh, you would use that or, or use this bottle, one that I'm using. And a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla flavor. And it's, again, it's by taste. The more of that sweetened condensed milk in there, the sweeter the glaze will be. The more of the lemon juice you use, then it's going to be a little bit more tart to the glaze. Tartness to the glaze.
and this is a quick and simple glaze and again it's a way to use up the remainder of that sweetened condensed milk from the cake batter of course miss johnny ruth didn't have a glaze on it and you, you really don't need it i when i ate a piece of the cake i was like yeah you really don't need the glaze but i didn't want to waste that sweetened condensed milk so i made a glaze and I use the whisk to just combine it. Here's the finished glaze and I'm just going to pour it over. The person that gave the suggestion for the glaze said to put it in a Ziploc bag or a piping bag and pipe it on that way. I didn't feel like doing that. I said I'm just going to try to pour it on there. And that's what I ended up doing first with just the bowl that it's in. And then I eventually used a spatula to get all of the glaze out of there and onto the cake. So it may not look pretty, but the taste is what really matters. And this is a really good tasting cake. I bow down to Miss Johnny Ruth Irving. I'm just pouring the glaze on from the bowl. Now I'm getting the spatula. Going around a little bit on the cake. And I decided to just spoon the rest of it on with the spatula. And here's the finished product. I'm going to take the first piece. I usually let my little brother cut the cakes, but I really wanted to taste this one. Because again, the batter tasted really good, so I'm like, I know the cake's going to taste good too. Next time I make it, and I will make it again, because it, it is a good tasting cake. I'm probably going to take it out after an hour in my oven. I left it in there about an hour and 12 minutes no i'm sorry no hour and seven minutes because it had eight minutes left i set it for an hour 15. so again it got a little too brown for me but the end product it tastes really good and you can see how moist it is right there and it tastes really good i highly recommend this cake so thank you family so much for watching if you haven't already please give the video a like Subscribe to the channel and make this cake. You will enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next video, family. Bye for now.